Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics with a quick video for you. Mostly, I want to give you an update on that huge collection I found a few weeks ago. My neighbor asked me to check out his old collection he has stored down in his basement, help him appraise it. I went down there and found an incredible collection, and I was even able to walk away with a couple of books I've always wanted, Hulk 181 and Fantastic Four 48. I knew when I was filming it, it might end up being a pretty good video that people would be interested in. Um, let's just say the response was... Uh, big, much bigger than I thought. Um, a lot of people saw it and I got tons of comments on it. And, um, you know, yes, whenever you have a, a video that gets a lot more viewers that don't know your channel, you do get, you know, a couple of the not so nice comments, but the overwhelming majority of feedback I got were, was very positive. And a lot of people sort of reassured me that I did the right thing in paying this guy more for his comic books and being completely open and honest. I mean, guys, that's why I was there was to help him price this stuff out. So it really wasn't that big of an ask. So still, um, I left that video saying, you know, I have a lot of work to do, you know, to go back over there, bag and board. Maybe work isn't the best term. I'm going to have a good time doing it. It's time. It's a lot of time and effort. You know, we're getting lots of bags and boards sorting. So I've been going over there to help him go through this collection. But progress has been slow for a couple of reasons. One, it's just time. Um, I had a vacation. He had a vacation. You know, we're always kind of playing phone tag. I'm a busy dad. I'm always busy on the weekend. So it's hard to always find more than like an hour or so to help him go through this stuff. But the other thing sort of exacerbating this whole process is that he keeps finding comic books. Um, a few days after um, that footage, uh, the original video, he found two huge containers of more comic books. One was like a huge plastic container and the other one was a massive cedar chest completely full to the top with comic books. Um, you know, in that last video, I probably only filmed half the comic books I saw and I would say what he showed me after that, what he subsequently found is double, maybe triple of what I saw that day. So the collection is huge. We keep finding new stuff. In the day I was over there uh, to go through the cedar chest, I was actually just dropping off supplies. He has lots of comic books of different sizes. You know, he has um, modern books. He has, you know, Bronze Age books, including those larger format ones, Silver Age books, and tons of magazines. So I've been getting these bags and boards. I drop them off whenever I can. I went over his house. I still had the car running because I had to come home and uh, grill food for the family for a cookout. And as soon as I got to the door, he says, I found a cedar chest full of comics. Want to come check them out? Um, and I promptly told him, that unfortunately, yes, yes, I absolutely would. I wouldn't shut the ignition off on the car and my family starved for uh, another hour. But uh, I went down there and um, I wasn't planning on filming. The original intent of me going down there was, again, I thought it'd be a quick thing. I didn't realize how many comic books would be in there. But mostly that chest was full of DC comics. I'm a Marvel guy. I don't know my DC keys nearly as well. I don't know, really know their value. So I was filming, you know, just so I could look them up later. Again, I was kind of in a rush to come back to my family. And um, I didn't do a good job, like, framing the picture. And on top of that, we were talking a lot very off the cuff about life, about family, about vacations we were taking, things I do not want to share on the internet for obvious reasons. So I'm going to show you guys some footage of me going through this cedar chest. Just know it's like 10% maybe even less of what I actually saw inside that case. But I will say this, not only was there a lot of DC comic books, there were quite a bit of Spider-Man comic books from the Silver Age. Going through the, the rest of his collection, he had it pretty well represented, all of the big Marvel titles of the 60s, lots of Avengers, Fantastic Four, Hulk, but he didn't have many Spider-Man. And when I said that to him, he said, oh, I have Spider-Man, I gotta find it. Well, we did. And we found quite a bit of Spider-Man. You're only gonna see a small percentage of it but I definitely found a pretty big book. So check out the footage and I'll meet you guys back here in a second. I can't believe how many comic books you have. Yeah, I got, got Remember, I got 800 of them from you the last time. So with, I don't know where you had all this stuff. I have no idea what that's worth, but it's awesome looking. The blockbuster goes back. Look at it. I mean, that cover's awesome, so. Yeah. yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. Well, so you can look these up later, I see. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so. this is a classic. They fought, is this where oh, they is race? this the second is, race? Is this where they, this is where the they first race? race is number one is Superman uh, one ninety nine, so that might be the, like their second race. One seventy five. Yeah, that might be because that's the flash. the flash. Yeah, so that might be like their second race because they race all the time. Yeah, people like the races. Another creeper, number three. Creeper. I like the I like the weird DC characters. Yeah. Right. Hey, here, here, here. Spider Man eighty six. Yeah, take a look. Want me to take them away from you? I mean, so sure. you can yeah. Take the, Take a stack. That one's cool. So all these Spider Mans. That one's good. Kane's hundred. This one's. 
What's that? Um, That's a good one. Stop. Stop right now. Oh, oh good. I like when you say that. I like when Take you say that. that. This, this is a good one? And no, I just put these aside. This one's cool but damaged. This one's pretty good. It's the next one. Oh, no. It's so damaged. What? Which, which one? Are the one I'm holding. Said. Yes. All right. Ready for this one? Okay, here we go again. <laughs> this one here, Amazing Spider-Man number 50. There's two things going for it. One, it's a very famous cover by John Romita, one of the most famous, where Spider-Man stops being Spider-Man. He wants to be just Peter Parker. Okay. But most importantly, it's the first appearance of Kingpin. <gasps> oh, Kingpin. The, the big fat, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. it. This is his first appearance right here. So that's worth some money? That's worth a lot of money. So yeah, that happened. We found an amazing Spider-Man number 50. As you heard me say in the footage, first appearance of the Kingpin, also very famous John Romita cover, Spider-Man No More uh, storyline. It's sort of a book that is a triple threat, right? Great cover, great story, first appearance of a major villain. Now, I've been saying this from the start, I'm not there to buy these books. I'm there to help him sell these books. But there is an understanding that if there's a book I can't live without, I will pay him a fair price for them. In that last video, the two books I got were number two and three on my list. ASM 50 is number five on my list. Or at least say uh, it was number five on my list. Because, yeah, I could not leave that house, even with a cookout looming in the near future, I could not leave that house <laughs> without getting this book amazing. Amazing Spider-Man number 50 from 1967, written by Stan Lee, art by John Romita. Spider-Man no more storyline where Peter Parker chooses not to be Spider-Man anymore. Doesn't that last very long. Of course, it's the first appearance of the Kingpin, uh, but most notably, this is an incredibly famous cover uh, by John Romita. The red cover is very affecting. It's got a lot of emotion. You see Peter Parker hanging up the costume. Uh, it's a rare cover where you get to see Peter Parker's face and the Spider-Man suit. And uh, this is a book I've wanted for a long time. The red cover it just is awesome. And quite honestly, this is probably my favorite amazing Spider-Man comic book of all time. That's why I had to have it. Uh, it's in pretty rough shape. It has a lot of, uh, of spine ticks, lots of color breaks. You guys saw it wasn't in a bag or board. It was just laying in this uh, chest for who knows how long. Um, pretty beat up. It has some tears. It's got some chips missing up here. Tear here, tear down here. Kind of a tear um, right here on the spine. So not in great shape. I value it at like a 2.5 or 3, like a good plus maybe on a good day. It definitely needs a press. I did lightly clean it just with a dry paper towel because it was filthy. Like literally dirt was coming off of it. So yeah, I'll tell you how much I paid him for it in a second. Uh, but this wasn't the only book we found. I stopped filming after that point, but we found a lot of Silver Age Spider-Man books right after this. Nothing huge, no other like first appearances of major villains, but good, you know, keys. We found some Bronze Age stuff. We found like the second full appearance of Punisher. So uh, yeah, we did find some more Spider-Man books. And uh, yeah, let's just say this isn't the only one I had to walk away with. I had to get the ultimate companion piece of that, and it's this. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 51, the very next issue, still written by Stan Lee uh, and John Romita Art. And this, of course, is the second appearance of Kingpin and the uh, first cover appearance of Kingpin. Awesome uh, uh, cover by John Romita once again. I love the colors on this book. It's a dark cover. It shows lots of, you know, damage to spine ticks, but still a very cool cover featuring the Kingpin for the first time on the cover. And, uh... This one's in really bad shape, so it may look pretty good from your standpoint because the colors are bright, but there is chipping all along the top as some water damage along the leading edge here, and the spine is an absolute mess for a couple of reasons. One, there was a sticker at one point over the 12 cent, and it looks like it was peeled up, and there's still glue there, but the most uh, damning thing about it is that there are were two extra staples in this when I found it, and... Uh, the, he said, the guy said he didn't put them there. He doesn't know how they ended up there. And um, I don't even know why they're in the book because the other original staples are fine. And before anyone uh, asks, no, there was not like a crazy publishing error. You know, one of these rare things where you get four staples. No, the staples were like an inch in on uh, the top and the bottom. And uh, because of that, the book was being read and folded like an inch in. And that's why you have this huge color break going right down next to the spine. So not in great shape. I definitely value this one, um, you know, somewhere around maybe a 2.0, if that. Um, but still, uh, these two books together, guys, uh, are pretty cool. I have owned this book in the past and since uh, parted with it. So I was happy to see this one again. And of course, I've always wanted number 50. So what did I pay? Well, this is where it gets kind of tricky because the original intent of me being there was I was bringing all these supplies and he was going to pay them, pay me for all of them. And I had a ton of stuff, guys. And bags and boards and boxes are expensive. So we both looked these up. I'm always transparent, always honest. We literally sat down at the computer, his desktop, 
and looked up recent sales on eBay, tried, you know, valuing these based on their condition, came up with a price. He gave me a great deal because I'm helping him. We subtracted the cost of all the stuff that I got for him, and I bought these both for 200 bucks cash. Again, not really 200 bucks. There's a lot more that went into that and a lot more I gave him, but obviously a really good deal, even with these being in poor condition. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, like this story still isn't over, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick update. A lot of people were asking me about the comics, you know, how far have I gotten? You know, what other stuff have you found? We're still going through them. Uh, we haven't made nearly as much headway because he keeps finding comic books. And every time we find them, it's like, oh, there's another thousand books. That's a lot more time uh, that we got to go through them. But still, guys, it's been an absolute blast doing this. I have so much fun whenever I'm there. It's great to talk with someone who read these books back in the day. And it's also refreshing to hear someone talk about these books where they're not really concerned about value. He doesn't really know what these are worth, um, but he knows the characters. And it's just a unique perspective in this day and age, you know, with the modern hobby, where people are obsessed with the value of books so much. It's just refreshing for him to be like, oh yeah, I read that book, it's a great story, and tells you all about the story, and he's completely detached from the cost of the book. It's fascinating, it's awesome, and I'm enjoying every single second of it. So there you go, guys, that's the update. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sure I'll have more updates in the future. Uh, in the meantime, keep hunting uh, for comic books in strange and unusual places, including your neighbor's basements. Um, that sounded weird. Um, don't just like go in their basements, you know, like if you have a neighbor that, you guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. Uh, keep looking at strange and unusual places. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.